In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I want to thank Father Tattersall for his very kind words on this happy and historical occasion. From the Gospel of St. Luke, so rich in parables, we hear today the familiar story of the sower and the seed. Our Lord speaks to us with imagery drawn from the farm, from the rural world of his land, yet across the millennia his words are timeless. He gives us a realistic understanding of something that often puzzles Christians, the different ways people respond to the grace God offers in the proclaimed word. The hard ground, the thorns, the rich soil, all different with a range of outcomes, and only one is fruitful. Nor is the role of Satan ignored. Satan, the enemy, so often impeding a response of faith, blocking the way home to God and glory. In this year of faith, the words of our Saviour speak to us as we are called by the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, to reflect seriously on faith and the new evangelization. I wish to relate this to your role here in this community. Today you celebrate 10 years since the blessed John Henry Newman Latin Mass community began a specific work, ministry and mission in this noble church of St. Aloysius, Caulfield. In the prayerful and serene pace of the divine liturgy, this community embodies an essential element in the broad Pax Liturgica, liturgical peace, forged by Blessed John Paul II and Benedict XVI, that is the just recognition of the classical Roman rite alongside the new forms of liturgy that emerged after the Second Vatican Council. However, those who come to worship here, even at some personal sacrifice, know that they do not come to some cosy liturgical club. They enter and become part of a living community of faith. Moreover, they soon discover that the faith is not only practiced through Mass and the sacraments, but taught accurately, thoroughly, and in ways adapted to the needs of children and adults. For this commitment to teaching the faith in all its fullness, I thank your priests, Father Glenn Tattersall, Father John McDaniel, and Father Colin Marshall. This is an evangelizing community. Clergy and laity not simply maintaining and promoting the classical tradition of ceremonial and fine music, but taking up that rich heritage of beauty and reverence and using it to bring men and women to Jesus Christ, our only Lord and Saviour, and into the communion of his holy Catholic Church. Let me add that liturgy is not used as a kind of instrument to evangelize. Rather, the liturgy is allowed to evangelize. There's a great difference between manipulating liturgy for some didactic end, and surely we've had enough of that, and simply letting the liturgy do the work of God's kingdom. Here we fall back on the grace of God, on the workings of the Holy Spirit in us. God the paraclete ever seeking to sow good seed in fertile ground. We need God. We need grace for we are weak and sinful. Yet our human dignity, created in the divine image, makes us capable of receiving the seed of divine life in baptism, the gift of faith and of bearing much fruit. 
as St. Paul assures us in today's epistle, repeating words Jesus Christ spoke to him in a mystical experience. My grace is made perfect in your weakness. My grace is made perfect in your weakness. What an encouraging message that is. One of my favorite quotes from the Pauline epistles. However, I want to suggest a more precise dimension to this mystery of evangelizing through worship and prayer. At the conclusion of the recent Synod of Bishops in Rome, the Synod Fathers presented our Holy Father with a series of propositions on the new evangelization, which of course was the theme of that Synod. I select one which has particular relevance to your community here. The new evangelization and the way of beauty. What is this way of beauty? It is surely what we all experience here and elsewhere whenever the Mass is celebrated reverently and well in the various forms recognized by the Church of East and West. The Synod proposition focuses on the aesthetics of the Church which reflect the beauty of God in Christ the Good Shepherd who is, quote, the truth in person. Here the Synod Fathers draw on that Augustinian heritage so dear to the heart of Pope Benedict that God is beautiful and the way to God is can be taken through the beautiful things of his creation. But I would apply that not only to the heritage of art and music and architecture, but to the very action of worship which evangelizes by drawing people into the transcendent, into the numinous, into the mystery of God among us in Christ. How many of us have experienced turning points in our lives, moments when the seed of faith sown in us suddenly sprouted into life? And these were times when the beauty of the true God drew us through the worship of the church. My call to you is to continue to bring people to God through this community, balancing the teaching of the faith and the work of charity with a sense of worship that reveals the divine. Many, perhaps most people today, do not operate in a cerebral way. They need to be offered an experience of communities of faith gathered by God in prayer and adoration. This is the subtle form of the new evangelization that cuts through amateur atheism, ideological secularism, personal alienation, and chilly modernism. It is warm and welcoming in a healing way that never intrudes, for our God is respectful and grace is not irresistible. But it is an evangelization that moves through the heart to the mind, that calls men and women to conversion of life, to become rich soil for the harvest of the kingdom. In the sublime act of worship, in the Eucharistic sacrifice, we are given a taste of eternity as the Second Vatican Council affirmed so clearly, the worship of heaven and earth intersects in the earthly liturgy. As we are part of the cosmic praise, the worship of the whole universe being made new through the hierarchical action of the sacrifice of the mystical body of Christ. When we join Our Lady and the saints, the Church triumphant and the Church expectant, 
our brothers and sisters in purgatory, here at the altar. Those are grand and rich concepts, so I invite you to read those opening paragraphs of Vatican II, Sacrosanctum Concilium, the decree on the liturgy, to rediscover the real vision of worship that was in the mind and the hearts of the Council Fathers 50 years ago. And in a gentler vein, we may recall the words of Blessed John Henry Newman when he described the Mass as the most beautiful thing this side of heaven. <laughs>